The Committee on Natural Resources will come to order. The Committee on Natural Resources today meets today to hear testimony on the Endangered Species Act, how litigation is costing jobs and impeding true, true recovery efforts. I recognize Mr. Kieran Suckling, the Executive Director of the Center for Bio Biological Diversity in uh, Tucson. You recognize Mr. Suckling. Thank you for inviting me, Chairman. I've got a PowerPoint presentation here. If we could go to the next slide. Um, you know, we've heard that the Endangered Species Act is not successful because only 1% of species have been removed from the act. Uh, this is a critique we've been hearing for, uh, for a decade or more. But it really begs the question, how many should have been removed by now? Uh, and it presumes, without any evidence whatsoever, that hundreds or all of them should have been removed by now. Uh, this question has been looked at by the JLO recently uh, by scientists, and what they've all concluded is that the work of recovering species takes many decades. Um, that work is outlined in federal recovery plans. Of all the species on the native species list today, on average, they've been on the list for 21 years. Their federal recovery plans, on average, require 42 years for listing. So these species are only halfway through the government's recovery program. So to assert that somehow they have failed because they did not recover twice as fast as the scientific plan to recover them says really doesn't make any sense. It's a lot like someone starting a 10-day course of antibiotics and declaring on day one that antibiotics don't work. I'm going to stop taking them. Um, so I want to go through uh, a few slides to show the recovery trend of species versus their uh, recovery time. If we can go to the next slide. This is the whooping crane, was listed as endangered species in 1967. Its federal recovery plan says it will take 83 years to recover the species. It will recover in 2050. Uh, during that time, it's increased from 54 pairs to 599. This is an endangered species success story not a failure, and it's on the road to recovery. Next slide. This is the Nene or the Hawaiian Goose. Um, it was listed in 67. Its recovery plan says it'll be listed in uh, 2034. That's 67 years. Meanwhile, it's increased from 875 birds to over 1,700 birds. It's on its way to recovery. It's another success. Uh, we have another slide, please. Florida Panther. Uh, its recovery plan says it's going to take 116 years to recover the Florida panther, listed in 67. It's not slated to come off the list until 2083. After a very rocky start, it's on a steady upward swing right now. Uh, much, much too early to declare the Endangered Species Act a failure for this species. We have the next slide. This is actually a, a picture of the uh, chairman and the ranking member discussing the Endangered Species Act. Um, here on the next slide. Now, it's actually the Utah Prairie Dog. Um, this is actually interesting. This is a territorial display. These guys actually fight each other and bump heads like bighorn sheep, but only much more exciting. Um, so it was put on the endangered species list in 1973. Its recovery plan said it's going to take 67 years. And as you can see, it's on an upward trajectory. There's over 11,000 of them now, growing from about 3,000 back in 73. Next slide. Short-nosed sturgeon in the Hudson River, its recovery plan says it's going to take 57 years uh, from its listing in 1967 to recover. It's well on its way, increasing from 12,000 fish to 56,000 fish. This species will actually probably be recovered in advance uh, of its slated recovery date. Um, can you go to the next slide? So when we look about how to measure the success of the Endangered Species Act, Asking species to recover before the recovery plans say they good is, say they should is not a good measure. What we should be asking is, are we preventing extinction? Are we putting species on the road to recovery? Uh, and are they recovering in the right speed that we expect them to in relationship to their recovery plans? So I'll go to the next slide, please. So in terms of extinction, uh, 10 species have been removed from the list due to extinction. Only two of those went extinct after they were listed. The ESA is 99.9 percent .9 effective in preventing extinction. Next slide, please. Uh, to determine whether species are moving toward recovery at the proper rate, 
uh, we examined every single native species in the north, in the eight northeast states. What we found was that 93% of all of those species are on a path toward recovery. Their populations are increasing. And 82% were downlisted or delisted in the time frame set out by the recovery plans. Um, so they are, in fact, the AS has been very successful in doing what it's supposed to do. It's far from a failure. Could the next slide, please? Uh, next. Oh, I guess we're done there. Then I wanted to mention one more thing, finally, um, in response to the settlement agreement that the uh, Department of Interior recently signed with the Center and with Wild Earth Guardians. Uh, Karen Bud Fallon said it would require the designation of 1,053 critical habitats. Uh, that's entirely incorrect. Uh, the agreement covers, I think, about 10 critical habitats, not 1,053. Um, the agreement primarily requires the agency to make final listing decisions on 251 species on its priority list. These are the priority identified by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Mr. Suckling, could you please? Uh, I'll be done in one second. And the settlement simply allows them to finish their own priorities, sir. Thank you very much.